Hey, nice people. It's a great honor to be with you, to be the church with you, and to be a designated reader with Pastor Emily today. The lessons from Romans 5, 1 to 5, reading from the New American Standard Bible. Oh Lord, help us to hear you. Amen. Paul said, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have also obtained our introduction by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we celebrate in hope of the glory of God. And not only this, but we also celebrate in our tribulations, knowing that tribulation brings about perseverance, and perseverance, proven character, and proven character, hope. And hope does not disappoint because the love of God that has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And when I told my family that Aisha had asked me to preach for this assembly and that I'd have 10 minutes to do so, my daughter said, Dad, 10 minutes? You? Maybe you can dub the recording at two times speed. I hadn't even told her the text was Romans. Well, this is exactly what she was talking about. Now it's nine. But friends, Paul wrote to people of the resurrection far away in Rome, saying these things. We stand in grace and celebrate in hope. We celebrate in hope even in our tribulations. And we celebrate hope in any struggle because as people of the resurrection, we know that God changes everything, even tribulation to triumph. By the power of God given to us by faith, struggle becomes perseverance, becomes character, becomes hope. Paul points out to those Christians in Rome that just as grace isn't cheap, neither is hope. Real hope can be hard-earned, can be a product of struggle and faith. Now his message surely resonated as encouragement for the marginalized Christians in Rome who knew tribulation well. It's a good and deep word. While Paul centers this writing on the experience of those marginalized Christians, the power of God and faith by which he encourages also has broad reach, it seems. And I've come to believe for the good news that, that struggle and faith becomes Hope has a liberating message, too, for people of privilege like me. A person of privilege like me or others like me may not be a stranger to tribulation and struggle, but we, we often have protections that shield and places to hide and bombs that heal not afforded to everyone else. Many of us can choose to avoid struggle and overcome tribulations. But Paul's word about where God's focus and power lie would, would caution against any of us being people who avoid hard things or struggle. Don't be quick to run for cover or hide just because you can. Don't stay apart or turned away from those who do struggle because God is in the struggle and with those who are. And marvelously in the struggle, is by God where the strongest hope can grow. For people like me in the primarily white, affluent, cishet Christian congregation I serve, all of us people of racial and economic and social and religious privilege, it seems from the word and from our recent lived experience that there's a faithful form of struggle that we can choose to assume. It's not the same and nothing like the tribulations of oppression, but when love and hope call for it, we can lay down some of what we have and we can step off of some of that on which we stand and instead assume a faithful and fertile posture of humility, of openness with which God can work and by which God can lead feels like we've experienced a lesson in this at St. Luke's in recent times, and I expect this is why Aisha has welcomed us to the pulpit today. One part of our life in which this humility, becoming hope, is building slowly among us at St. Luke's through our relationships with neighbors of other faiths. In October 2018, when the Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh was tragically attacked, we, we reached out to our friends and neighbors at Temple Emmanuel in sorrow and solidarity. 
Their pastor, Rabbi Spike, has said they heard from one neighbor at the time, and they read our note aloud at the temple's vigil that night. Our congregations have been moved since to grow in relationship, sometimes for worship and fellowship, and sometimes for standing against anti-Semitism in our community together. A few months after that friendship rekindled, in March 2019, in Christchurch, New Zealand, you might recall, mosques were attacked tragically, and as we had done recently with our Jewish neighbors, we reached out to the new Masjid Uthman in Dunwoody. The St. Luke's session wrote a letter of love and support to them that the pastors delivered to their new office park sanctuary during Friday evening prayers. Pastor Shannon Dill and I were welcomed into the mosque so warmly, and our clergy and congregations became fast friends. And the fast friendship took an unexpected turn shortly thereafter, when one weekend, churches in Sri Lanka were tragically attacked on Easter. Our new friend, Imam Rafat, called me and asked me if we were having worship that next Sunday, which of course we were, and because he and their elders would like to come to our worship service. And as we had with them, they would like to come and express sorrow and solidarity to us. Our new friends came to our worship service in this very chapel and spoke from this very place I am planted today spoke about how the power of God at work among and between us was greater than any threats of violence and tragedy anywhere. It was an Easter season message, if I have ever heard one. And then Imam Rafat proceeded to give what I feel sure was the first benediction by Imam in a St. Luke's Sunday worship service. We've since shared meals, and last year St. Luke's hosted a teaching exhibit the mosque brought to the area entitled Jesus According to Islam, in which we got to learn so much about Islamic faith and talk together about the similarities and differences between the faith stories to which we each turn. And since we have continued to reach out to our friends in grief and anger over the devastating war in Palestine. Sharing in tribulations together is important, as Paul says, and it can be quite painful as we share in tribulations together as the Spirit holds us. And we've simply followed where all these friendships lead with open minds and hearts since. We've we've come to know, uh, as a part of all this, Turkish Muslim friends in the Atlantic Institute in Alpharetta and a a widening community of Abrahamic interreligious friendships just keeps emerging. And while COVID slowed down the pace of things a bit, the most meaningful interfaith episode yet emerged this past December. We had been working toward a new idea in community, an interfaith Advent service of lessons and carols during Sunday worship here at St. Luke's. As we were preparing for that new thing, after October 7th, we assumed the attacks in Israel and Palestine would have canceled our developing plans for a worship service together in December. But because we could stand on friendships and trust built with sensitivity and humility, and because a bunch of trusting, humble hearts from each of our communities remained open to getting together before God, last December 11th, we celebrated a Sunday morning worship like I've never experienced. Dozens of Jewish and Muslim friends joined us that morning as Rabbi Spike read from Psalm 57 in Hebrew and English. He and I gave an Advent and Hanukkah reflection together. The temple's cantor offered music, and a a Muslim woman leader named Beza gave a powerful reflection from the St. Luke's pulpit on faith and friendship, and then read the call of Abraham in Genesis to us all. And then the rest of the prophetic and angelic Advent story we all know well, the story filled with the promise of God's gracious work It unfolded on a giant foundation of hope that was embodied in the sanctuary from which it was being told and sung. I'm not sure there was a dry eye in the house that morning, including my own. I I sense that experience was encounter with our giant and gentle God, finding the sad and despairing places deep in our hearts and speaking an assuring and empowering word of hope, rewarding our togetherness. 
Has this sort of thing ever happened before as a Sunday morning Christian worship service? I don't know, but it sure felt new to me and us. It was the most powerful encounter with God I've ever had in worship, and I've heard many others who were there say the same. The experience, in fact, was so moving that I received calls that very afternoon from each congregation that had participated, asking if it would be possible in such a distressing and dividing time to follow up our time of worship with a time of fellowship and prayer together. And so, of course, on January 6th, a, a day known more these days for far lesser things, we had an interfaith fellowship and prayer at St. Luke's for ceasefire and peace. About a hundred of us attended. We enjoyed a meal together and we finished by making one big circle in our great hall, most holding hands and praying for each other and for Palestine and for Israel and for an end to anti-Semitism and Islamophobia everywhere. The whole experience has accompanied the struggle and anguish of our times with something else too hope. We here continue to pray constantly for an end to violence in Israel and Palestine, and we do so in active community with people who understand that conflict very differently overseas, but who nonetheless pray in relationship together, who fellowship and worship together in our holy seasons for Sukkot and Iftar, and of course, Advent, our great season of hope. We have felt so fortunate to be part of this emerging, and I, I think all of us who are part of it around here realize that we got here not by our own strategic devices, but by humility and friendship and faith. Step out, stay open, and follow the Spirit's lead has been our one swing thought. In our experience, you can find great hope in humility as our stepping out in strange new places continues to be met with great blessing, we are around here all coming to trust with eagerness the one who, by the power at work within us, is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we could ask or imagine. As my new friend Beza said after our interfaith Advent worship service here at St. Luke's, what was that? And how do I get more of it? I and we feel the same way. Friends, wherever we are, may we find God in the great struggle. And may we not shy from hard new things either as we work and wait in faith for the hope to build and carry us to the new place that feels like home. Thank you and peace be with you.